Hello and welcome to National Focus. I am Julian Morris. In the headlines, Dominica's geothermal project goes into a new phase with the drilling of reinjection well. 52 public officers receive digital transformation training and government to increase export capability of the fisheries sector. The details of the headline stories and more coming up. Welcome back. Dominica's geothermal development project has moved to a new phase. This as drilling of the reinjection well commenced at Loda on Friday, March 10. Mr. Dalton Ilwa is the project support engineer, mechanical, of the Dominica Geothermal Development Company. What we see behind me is the drilling rig. It's the, it belongs to the Iceland Drilling Company, who's our drilling contractor. And they, are, they will begin drilling Sometime today, that's the plan. They are doing the final test. They are just making sure that all systems, all systems go, and um, we will be going to the, our final depth. Expected about 20 to 30 days. That's the design. Of course, we're going to design for 1,500 meters, but of course, the possibility of a, sh a more a quicker drilling period or even slower, based on the actual conditions in the well. Mr. Eloa says the reinjection well is an important component of a geothermal power plant. In a power plant, you have, you have a production well or you use production wells, which is where you get your heat source, the, the fluids that you need for generating power. When you do that though, you would, it's very responsible and also in terms of reservoir management that you reinject the fluids. They are a lower temperature fluid, of course, because you extracted heat for power generation but at the same time you also want to maintain your reservoir pressures. That helps to do that as well. But it's also responsible because geothermal fluids are not the same, are not surface fluids. So it's also a clean way and it's a renewable way and of course environmentally responsible. Drilling of the production and reinjection well of the geothermal project was carried out by the Iceland Drilling Company. The production wells have been completed and the results so far are beyond expectation and extremely promising. The government of Dominica continues to invest heavily in the blue and green economy in a bid to increase the output and export capability of the fisheries sector. Kavir John reports. These investments can be seen in the numerous projects and initiatives being undertaken in the sector, including the recent rehabilitation of the Roseau Fisheries Complex. Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and the Blue and Green Economy, with responsibility for fisheries and the blue economy, Honorable Julian Defoe, says focus must be placed on increasing the value of the export products. There are two things. Um, we want to increase exports, but also the value. Because sometimes people don't make the correlations between a value. We can, we can, we can ship the same volume with a higher value. And um, one thing that we didn't mention at the beginning, fisheries is an extractive industry. So we do not go on a piece of plant unless if you're doing aquaculture and, and so on. But primarily, our, most of our, our, our fish, 99%, comes from, you know, extracting fish from the, from the wild. Mm -hmm. So this is a wild-caught fish. And um, so the, uh, the question of sustainable is key, even before when we speak, we speak to marketing. But Minister Defoe explained that the highest value comes from the export of fresh fish. Marketing for us is the first thing that we have 
value. So we want to make sure that our products that we're sending out, we're getting the best value. And uh, the best value at this current moment comes from the sale of um, fresh fish. Okay, so this has always been our primary focus with frozen as secondary. So what have we done? Again, we have done many. Um, this is one of the main reasons why the Rosal Fisheries Complex was built. And I say that out of the three, because we have Marigot, we have Portsmouth, but Rosa was always meant to be the marketing hub. So this is why you have much more amenities and services there, such as um, cold storage, the availability of ice, and uh, a fish processing area. The minister stated that Tropical Storm Erica had greatly impacted Dominica's exports of fresh fish. We had several players in play ready to move that sector forward. When first we were hit by Erica, so therefore, and, and, and this, was, this was significant, significant in the fact that at that time we had air cargo coming into Dominica Weekly, which was a marriage yet. Mm -hmm. And remember I tell you the value of fish really in the international market is fresh. So we were at that point on, on the verge of having a ready market in, in the U.S. to ship via a marriage yet. So a ship would be, fished, it would be shipped out from Dominica today, um, first day, and it would guarantee that it would arrive in the Miami market tomorrow Friday. So it, the, my marriage would move Dominica, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico to Miami. So post um, Erica, um, resum um, my marriage has not resumed air service. So we do not have this air cargo. Minister Defoe added that despite the unavailability of direct air cargo, government through the ministry has pursued alternatives to boost the sector's export capability. But of course, we are exploring other alternatives, um, containerized um, um, large shipments of frozen. So I said it preferred was fresh, but frozen can also work. It's just that for the exporter, the margin is, is less. Mm -hmm. But it's an option that we are, we are willing to go with until, um, thank God, that we will have the establishment or the completion of the, of the international airport. Kovia John for the Government Information Service. The DVRP East Coast Road project takes a new phase as surfacing began last weekend. Daryl Tate takes a look at the progress. The government of Dominica is committed to developing a proper road network capable of moving Dominicans, visitors and the goods they use from one point to another day or night. Over the past decade, the Dominica Labour Party administration has invested heavily in developing a road network with the construction of new roads and rehabilitation of existing roadways. One such development is the East Coast Road Project, where 43.3 kilometers of road from Boadiap to Hatton Garden is currently under construction. This project, funded through loan funds from the World Bank under the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, is to the tune of over $127 million. The project includes slope stabilization, construction of bridges, box culverts, and appropriate drainage. This project entered a new phase on Sunday, March 5, 2023, with the commencement of road surfacing. While there has been some level of inconvenience to commuters utilizing this road, the surfacing of just under three kilometers of roadway from the Boadiap Junction gives commuters a taste of what can be expected once the project is complete. This project has been seriously impacted by severe weather conditions, including the November 6, 2022 trough system, which caused major damage in the east of Dominica. This has resulted in variations to the project aimed at mitigating against potential threats associated with flooding and other disastrous weather situations. In the coming months, we will see the, the surfacing of the roads from the Boadjab area into the Kasebris community. Um, we have had numerous setbacks in the course of this project. We have, we have been affected by, by very strange weather conditions, uh, but nonetheless, we are able to, to provide uh, that service to the general East Coast area. And what we realize within the, pro the construct of the project, we have had um, many issues that we had to address at the socioeconomic level to ensure that um, access to communities uh, remain, uh, but also to provide a, a safe and secure environment for the continuation of the project. Satradam is the company contracted to implement this project. 
Mass en la oui has been deemed a success since its conclusion on February 22, 2023. Minister for Tourism, Honorable Denise Charles, joins locals and visitors in support of the season's success. Dominica's carnival kicked off after a two-year absence on January 14, 2023, with the official opening parade. A number of unique elements were also added to the calendar of activities this year, which encouraged more support from patrons. Carnival is the first of the three official Marquis events hosted by the Discover Dominica Authority, and it has set the tone for what should be a year of positive results from the Ministry of Tourism Entertainment pillar. During the carnival period, we welcomed over 4,000 visitors to our shores. 35% arrived by air and 65% by sea or ferry. In terms of source markets, carnival visitors to Dominica from the French West Indies maintained the same share as from 2020 at 40%, while visitors from the US increased to 21% versus 20% in 2020. The Ministry of Tourism through the Discover Dominica Authority will continue to market Dominica as the destination choice of the Caribbean in an aim to increase visitor arrivals. The overall arrival figures were down 14% from 2020. The main reason was due to a reduction in flights coming into the island, particularly from the region during that period when compared to the same period in 2020. As the data shows, it is critical that as a region, we seek solutions to increase air capacity. I would like to thank Inter-Caribbean Airlines, Caribbean Airlines, LIAT, for keeping the regional travel market performing in these critical seasons. Minister Charles expressed gratitude to all stakeholders who made the rollout of Mass Dominic 23 a resounding success. She looks forward to the enhancement of the carnival experience in 2024. A carnival task force will be established to review and make key recommendations to enhance the carnival product in 2024 and beyond. Mass Dominic 2024 is carded for February 12 and 13. Meanwhile, jazz and creole is up next on the ministry's calendar of activities. Preparation is currently ongoing for the event carded for April 30, 2023. I would like to encourage everyone to show the same enthusiasm and cooperation. The theme for this year's Jazz and Creole is Rainforest Fantasy, highlighting shades of green, our forests, our flora and fauna, waterfalls, rivers, lakes and hot springs, which is in sync with the Nature Island brand and promoting sustainable tourism. Jazz and Creole will be held at the Cabritz National Park. You are watching National Focus. More when you return. I love the freedom when I'm out there. Simply put, the worries from shore, none of that out there. And it's my daily bread. I learned it from my dad. My dad is one of the senior guys here who catch the biggest fish around here. And he's top with the red snappers. It's a family thing. I'm the only one fishing right now in the family. Just keeping it going. I enjoy bringing them up, man. <laughs> Sometimes you have a yellowfin tuna, 400 pounds. Man, let me tell you, that's just a joy out there. I enjoy going out there and just holding the big fish. I don't lift weights, I lift fish. The morning of my fishing trip, I would get up, make a little spicy tea. Then I come down here, I have my GPS, which most fishermen are supposed to have that. Normally, I prepare the day before, because whenever you're going out there, you must have ice. Ice is a must for preservation of the fish. So I always make sure I have everything the day before. My fish represents me and I bring good quality fish ashore simply because the restaurant themselves, they have to show a quality product. Tourism and agriculture go hand in hand, that's what I think. We're all connected, it's, it's like a big machine and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. My name is Brandon Carlyle and tourism is my business. Welcome back. Caribbean Airlines continues to aid in improving air access to Dominica with provisions being made for an increase in services. Alia Martin reports. Effective April 7, 
Dominica will welcome an increase in Caribbean airline flights with the addition of return services from Trinidad on Fridays. Currently, Caribbean Airlines operates service to Dominica on Thursdays from Port of Spain or POS and then onwards to Bridgetown and offers services from Bridgetown to Dominica on Mondays onwards to POS. The flights operate on the ATR-72, which has 68 seats. Travelers from the tri-state area in the United States can also travel same day to Dominica via Caribbean Airlines. For example, leave New York via JFK at 7.30 a.m. on Fridays and arrive in Dominica by 6.45 p.m. Stay over for one week and depart Dominica on Friday at 7.40 p.m. and arrive back at GFK on Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Caribbean Airlines began its services to Dominica on September 20, 2020 in efforts to improve air access to the island. Alia Martin for the Government Information Service. The government of Dominica, through the Ministry of Telecommunications and Broadcasting, in collaboration with the United Nations Development Program, has hosted a digital transformation training course targeting public officers. More in this report. 52 public officers participated in the digital transformation training course, which ran from February 6 to March 9, 2023. Head of the UNDP Project Office, Ms. Laura Hildebrand, stated that the course was developed to engage civil servants in the digital economy transformation which is currently ongoing. What the course was was really an introduction. I mean, we developed this course over months of working with governments and discovering we were talking about digital transformation, but we didn't necessarily have a, a shared and common understanding of what the key pillars were of digital transformation, what some of the key terms meant, when we talked about digital skills, what did we mean by that? When we talked about the importance of the private sector playing a role in, the, in digital transformation, that wasn't always clear either. So we, we really developed this course for, for you, for civil servants, specifically in small island developing states, but I can say that people around the world are taking the course from Nigeria, Ecuador. I mean, we have people right across the world who've been participating in the course as well. She explained that while the course will help with the personal development of the civil servants, it will also aid government to properly serve its citizens using digital technology. But we wanted to do the course specifically in Dominica because there was this important opportunity of the launch of the National Digital Transformation Strategy. And, the, and this is one part of the, the government's overall outreach related to that strategy. And it's really about empowering you as civil servants to have a role in the digital transformation both for yourselves as individuals, because all of us are learning, the technologies are new, things are changing all the time. So just in terms of keeping ourselves up to date as professionals, um, of course, we need to stay on track with that. But of course, as you saw from the course material, a lot of the content really is regarding how you as a government can work more effectively internally with your administrative systems but also how you can improve your services to the public using digital technology. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Telecommunications and Broadcasting, Mr. Emmy Lancelot, stated that trainings like these are required if government is to achieve their goal of digital transformation. Most of you should be aware and have knowledge of the content of the digital transformation strategy, which has highlighted that government, in close collaboration with the private sector and civil society, will be the driver of digital transformation, which will require government to deliver high quality, inclusive and sustainable digital service to the public that is founded on a digital skilled public service. Hence, the first cohort of this training is geared at achieving this desired goal. Mr. Lancelot added that this training is another step towards becoming a climate resilient country in all sectors of development. What we have started with this training is also in keeping with our vision to be the world's first climate resilient country. The Dominican National Resilient Development Strategy 2030 expressly states that the digitization and the digitalization of our government, business, healthcare, education, 
agricultural services, and other parts of the economy, but will form the backbone of Dominica's resilience. This is the second initiative of its kind following the Work Online program. Kovia John for the Government Information Service. Government is committed to protecting and maintaining the rights of all citizens, not only as enshrined in the Constitution, but because of love and care for the people. On March 8, Dominica joined the rest of the world in observance of International Women's Day under the theme Digital Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Social Services has been in the forefront of addressing concerns surrounding gender-based violence, which predominantly affects women. I fully commit, I wholeheartedly pledge to fight this cause with you, for you, and on behalf of you. So going forward, very soon you will see some changes, and we have started to make some changes. Very soon you will hear about a new structure at social services. You'll hear about this very soon. Very soon you will hear about a suite of family bills that we'll put forward. And what we're doing right now is to protect our children, protect our women, protect our vulnerable, protect the abused. Minister Laville says now is the time to take a stance for gender equality and fight for inclusion. We can't have and continue to have a world without equity. We can't continue to have a world where we don't protect or we do very little or not enough to protect our women and our children and the vulnerable. So in me, you have a partner. In me, absolutely, you have a champion. But I will need your help. We need to continue working together. And I know and I trust by your interest here tonight, by your show, by your participation, I know and trust that I have partners in you. Meanwhile, Minister with Responsibility for Gender Affairs, Honorable Dr. Cassandra Williams, calls for an increase in the awareness of gender-based violence. We must also consider one of the biggest hindrances to gender equality. The issue has, for some time, been a concern with much discussion at present being generated at the national level, mostly related to the recent incidents which occasioned two deaths. I want to focus on how we as a nation can take the necessary measures to prevent domestic violence against women. Gender-based violence is a form of discrimination and it violates the basic human rights of women and girls. In Dominica, gender-based violence is most commonly identified within the family setting. It includes various forms of child abuse, spousal abuse, and abuse of the elderly. Gender-based violence is an offensive reality impacting negatively on the family, the, work, the workplace, and all other social institutions, and so government condemns any acts of gender-based violence. The Ministry of Tourism and the Portsmouth Association of Yachting Services pays in collaboration with the Dominica Festivals Commission will host the first ever yachting festival in Dominica. Adisha Burton reports. The first edition of the Portsmouth Association of Yachting Services pays Dominica Yachting Festival is scheduled to run from March 19 to 26, 2023. The pays Dominica Yachting Festival is the legacy of the Yachty Appreciation Week, which was hosted as an annual event in appreciation of cruisers to welcome them to our shores after the St. Martin Heineken Regatta. The Pays Dominica Yachting Festival will be hosted at Prince Rupert's Bay in Portsmouth under the theme Yachting in Our Communities. The aim of this festival is to increase yacht arrivals to Dominica by offering a diverse range of activities and entertainment for yachters. Details of the Yachting Festival were released at the official media launch by President of Portsmouth Association of Yachting Services, Pays Mr. Andrew Crowborough O'Brien, on the 9th of March, 2023. So, our period is a seven-day period. It's Sunday to Sunday. So, from the first, the opening, which is going to be the registration day, which is the Sunday on the 19th. We're going to have registration. All the yachts will come and register. We'll be having music, making the environment, the atmosphere very vibrant and 
lively one. So we'll have registration of the yachts. We will also have um, a major dinner, like a welcoming, opening dinner at the Cabritz Kempinski. We decided, well, thanks to the Ministry of Tourism, who brought up the idea. Mr. O'Brien says PAYS coordinated activities to cater to the needs of different participants. We're giving the, the folks options of hiking to the Boiling Lake, or they can do the Roseau Valley Adventure, and for the less active people, they can do the Roseau Valley Experience. We, we, we tailor cut the tours and package them so that the people could have options, right? So um, <clears throat> after that, what we are going to do, because we want to decentralize a bit, because tourism is everybody's business, like we say, and because we're reaching out to all the communities, we want to share the experience as much as we can. The Minister for Tourism, Honorable Denise Charles, says this festival is a culmination of the hard work of PACE and that the Ministry of Tourism is glad to lend its support as a partner. This Yachting Festival is the start of the strengthening of a partnership as we harness our blue economy in a sustainable manner to create jobs, boost economic activity, build small businesses, and showcase the unexploited beauty of the Nature Isle. Dominica is on the move, and the days ahead are even more exciting. Right here in the north, soon, soon, we shall have our marina. This marina will catapult the growth of the north and bring added benefits to all stakeholders. So the Pays Dominica Yachting Festival is well placed to raise awareness and present an additional reason to come to Dominica. Minister Charles urged residents to uphold their responsibilities as citizens of Dominica in keeping the environment clean. The north shall be booming again with new residents and visitors. Therefore, the onus is on you, the community, especially the northern communities, to take ownership of these opportunities and enhance your products, and also to work together to keep your community clean and beautiful. I cannot stress this enough. The most notable activities of the Pays Dominica Yachting Festival include an open class yacht race, beach games and fun day, lion fish hunt, clean up of Prince Rupert's Bay, outreach and distribution of food hampers to the local community, tours to the Indian River, syndicate nature trails and waterfalls, hike to the boiling lake, games night and barbecue a morning market, and more. The President of Pays, Mr. O'Brien, invites and welcomes everyone to enjoy the Pays Dominica Yachting Festival 2023. Adisa Burton for the Government Information Service. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS Dominica on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitter. You can also drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm. From all of us here on the GIS news production team, I'm Julian Morris. Thanks for watching.